It's that big you can't even get it in the camera. It's just so uh, all of us. Amazing. It's almost Aztec. I don't know. It's the oldest ship in the world. Oldest. From the 1700s. That's sat on the bottom of the ocean for 333 years. Well, yeah, and they've restored it. But how good is that wood that it's been able to be pulled up above the water and put in the museum? Obviously, the boat had not been known. Hop up there and bang it back in. <laughs> the portholes and the bell. So beautiful. It's so amazing. All that big sleepers. I don't know how heavy they are. It's in the way, but.
Yeah, the bus. Awesome. This shows you how they think the boat will be painted. Yeah. Wow. Down the water. Oh, scary. I'm gonna mess with them. So it must be what it looked like over there. Number 14, the sailing ship. There is a hive of activity on board the ship. Seamen climb up to the mastheads and from the main top set the main topsail. Even though many of the crew are new recruits, they are not spared the climb to the top, 17 meters over the deck. The sails fill with wind and water foams at the stem. All the lions. The captain stands on the quarterdeck with an overview of the ship and crew as they make their way out into the archipelago. It required 90 seamen and about 20 officers to sail Vasa. They needed to keep watch for other ships, storm clouds and dangerous rocks, so cooperation was important. When underway, the seamen were divided into port and starboard watch rotations. When one group was asleep, the other was on duty. Each watch was four hours long, so nobody slept more than three and a half hours at a time. At night, when the spars creaked, when the rigging strained and the wind shrieked around the masts, when the water was cold, black and deep, and the waves were high enough to make the ship heel over, the seamen would pray to God that the ship wouldn't come too close to land or rocks. They would promise to mend their way. Vasa is exhibited today as if it was laid up for the winter in port, with only the lower masts rigged and without sails. Vasa's fore and main masts were initially made of three parts each. In this way it was possible to achieve a tall mast with the available trees and also provide the ability to reduce windage and dangerous weight high above the deck in a storm. On Vasa's maiden voyage, four of the ten sails were set. The other six have survived. The smallest of them, the four topgallant sail, is on display just behind the ship's stern. 